So there can be a utility to honoring our psychology. Thank you. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for doing that. But you're not needed anymore in the sense of now I'm, I found this. And ultimately, you're giving this freedom to those parts. And this is another reason why all these parts rush up. Because it's almost as if like a hole has been blasted through your egoic structure. So you somehow have access to this space. Now these parts are like, hey, I want freedom too. Look at me. Give me freedom. Hear my story. All these things that were pushed down, they're basically pushed down because they couldn't be metabolized. And so this is part of the awakening process. It's now all these parts are coming to be unwound. And for the most part, a lot of these emotions and contractions, you don't really need to do anything but just allow them to be felt. There's little micro adjustments you can do, but that's the biggest, the biggest resource that we learn to find when we find space and awareness is just, we now have the space to feel. And I mean, sometimes, I mean, having someone to hold your hand through that, like that's where good therapy can actually be useful. At that point, and especially if the therapist is on track with you, all that they're doing is just kind of like holding space for you to process your own stuff. And how did you process it? You just felt. There was actually a process for me after what I would consider my sort of first awakening experience uh, where I re-entered therapy. Um, and there was uh, six uh, sessions that I consider the most dramatic therapy of all the years that I went to. And what those sessions were, I showed up, I sat down, and I just started bawling for an hour straight, for six weeks straight. And I didn't know what the fuck was going on, and I had a therapist that was conscious enough to let me do it. And he was totally okay with it just literally just unwinding and unwinding and unwinding. And it felt good and I didn't know what was going on. He wasn't even actually able to kind of give me context, but he just, you know, he's a really good therapist. So he's like, well, it's happening. So emoting is always good. But literally that's what was happening. I was just unwinding at, at a really base primal level. And I mean, that, same process that I learned in, in those therapy sessions continued in my sitting practice. Meaning, things will arise. So what? Let them unwind. I mean, for me, a bigger part of the deepening is not just waking out of the structure, it's developing a tolerance for more intense emotions and energies. Because the totality of who and what we are is not just divine and light, it's also dark. So where the process will take us, and this is the essence of awakened gut, it's, I often say the awakened gut is all about intensity. So it's basically tuning into and opening to the light and the bliss and the love and the divinity which is beautiful and that will come. But at a certain point, the invitation was, can you just let that go? Can you open to it? Can you experience that? But are you still fixated to it? Well, what happens? Can you let it go? That will be invited on the light side, on the dark side. It's basically what's going to be invited is, can you open to it? Can you see that as you too? Can you see that as you too? And that's the most difficult part of the journey. Oftentimes, spiritual teachings don't even take you there. They just take you to oneness and divinity, and they say, that's it. <laughs> but if you look at, for example, like the Bhagavad Gita, uh, do you know the Gita? It's basically a... Uh, uh, right, okay. Okay, well, there, there's Krishna and Arjuna. Arjuna is the seeker, and Krishna is an incarnation of God or a realized saint or being. Well, there's, there's that part too, but there's one part in the story where Arjuna, the seeker, says to God, or the incarnation of God, show me your totality. And in the story, it's beautiful, because he shows himself in his totality, and Arjuna, the seeker, is horrified. 
Not like you're so God, he's horrified. Basically because he showed his light and his dark. And, and basically the story goes somewhere along the lines of hide yourself, I can't take it, please veil yourself again. And it's in other traditions too when you look. Someone recently told me in the Gospel of Thomas there's the same essence is revealed, where the dark side is revealed. It's like, well, oneness. <laughs> we're talking about non-duality. Well, we're everything. So that comes too. But I mean, that, that sense of bringing that sense of space, allowing it to fall back even deeper and allow a deeper softening, opening to that, allowing that to unwind. That's it. <laughs>